Hey there, comic junkies. Mikey here, and welcome to Star Week Episode 6. So we are finally at the end of the original trilogy, which today we're going to go into Return of the Jedi. <laughs> so... This movie, like I said, is at the end, and the Rebels are making one last Hail Mary attempt to take down the Empire. And the Empire are building a new Death Star. They have one that's kind of like halfway built. Um, dare I say the effect of this one looked, still looks pretty cool. It still looked really good. I mean, it, you can tell like it's a model. But it looked really good. You know, I kind of respect that. It looked really like it was really there. Um, uh, Luke does uh, keep his promise to go back and train under Yoda, but not without... They make an attempt to... They rescue Han, and, you know, the crew gets back together and everything like that. They do away with Boba Fett. Boba Fett kind of goes out like a chump. <laughs> he does. I'm sorry, guys. He really does. He goes out like a chump and it was just like really <laughs> a lot of people like this character i was kind of like he's i mean he's all right <laughs> but um a lot of people like this character and how he went out i definitely understand like why people were upset about that um but yeah uh, job of the hut meets his end he is no more um leah of all people <laughs> choked him out <laughs> um and but yeah uh they went back and like i said everyone's they rescued him Rescued Han and like I said, the team got back together. They went to you know join the rest of the the alliance. Han, uh, sorry, Han. Um, Luke goes back to the Dagobah system to train to continue his training under Yoda. However, Yoda's old man. He's over nine hundred years old and he's he's dying. And so by the time he gets back there, it's kind of too late. But y Yoda tells him like, "Hey, you you know everything that you need to know." Um, there's nothing more I can really show you. So, which kind of begs to question, like, um, why were you trying to keep, what were you trying to do? Were you trying to protect him? Did they know that, um, did they know that he might tell, like, he might tell him who the, the father that, uh, that Darth Vader might say like, Hey, I'm your father, but no. No, actually, this is how, like, I'm thinking about this right now. I just saw the movie, so, thinking about this right now, I've seen it before, but it's this, like, I haven't seen this one in a long time. I've seen the, um, episode two, episode five, like, episode two, <laughs> I've seen episode five many, many, many times, because it's my favorite one, so, um, episode, this one, I feel like Yoda kind of, I don't think anyone expected Darth Vader to tell him that he was his father because he says like I didn't I didn't expect that. And then I feel like maybe they both were just like, "Huh. Maybe Darth Vader isn't as evil as we thought he was." And um maybe that's why Yoda told him what he told him as far as like there's nothing more I can teach you. Um, just, you know, go out there. I mean, he really does. He tells him to go out there and, and do, do his best, do what he feels is right and everything. Um, you get Obi-Wan who comes back and tries to give him some kind of BS <laughs> explanation as to why he lied, but I still feel like it wasn't cool. I, I, I still do. I'm sorry, but I really still feel like that was a, that wasn't cool. Um, I understand you trying to keep it from him to try to protect him. But, you know, you could have said something else. You know, there's a difference. There's, there's not really a difference in how you lie. But, like, withholding information, you know, is different. If he withheld the fact that, you know, if, if he told said it a different way, then I would kind of buy buy into his whole, like, well, it, in a sense, what I, what I told you was true in a matter of speaking. Um. I would have bought that line a little more if he had said it. If he had worded how the, the things went down with Anakin a little bit differently. Um, but, nah, nah, Obi-Wan. <laughs> no, Obi-Wan. You, you, uh, you, yeah, yeah, it's BS. It's BS, man. It's BS. I'm calling you on your BS. It's BS. 
Um, but eventually they do go to, like I said, they're going at this last ditch Hail Mary, but the Empire knows about it. And here's the thing, like they knew about it, but I don't think they ever truly uh, knew how, um, unless there was some kind of leak or something, makes you wonder, maybe there's going to be something between six, episode six and episode seven, who knows? Um, but anyway, um... There's a, they, they, they kind of like, this is where you get that, that iconic line. It's a trap because yeah, it is a trap. They are, they go and they try to take down the Death Star. Um, that's Luke, that's, uh, Han's mission and, uh, Leia and excuse me, excuse me, Lando. And, you know, they go on this mission and stuff like that to try to take them down, but it realizes it's a trap. Um, you get the whole scene with uh, the Ewoks. I'm not going to lie. It's dumb. It has a payoff in the end. It has a payoff. I give it that. But it's it's dumb. <laughs> when you see everything that's going down. I'm like, I know you're kind of looking for moments of levity here. But in terms of the tone of the film and what you've been setting up from the beginning, it's this is dumb. <laughs> you know, I... I, I I would see that more happening in either the prequels or maybe episode four. If you had a scene or a scene like that, like I said, it has payoff in the end. They, the Ewoks do come out and help and they kick butt and it's actually sad when some of them die. And as a result of it, it's actually really sad when they have this war scene and stuff like that. And I didn't get into this in the last episode, but you were introduced to the AT-ATs in the last uh, episode of Star Wars. And you see them here again, somewhat, you see some of the other ones and stuff like that but you know i was like yeah, this is you know like so it, you felt like it had that war scene and everything you had that last ditch effort like i said it's hail mary to try to take them down and palpatine i keep calling him palpatine <laughs> uh darth sidious the the uh the emperor is trying to coax luke to come to the dark side he's using all this stuff against him because he doesn't kill the, the, the like they said there's an ambush out there but he's like no like and even like the soldiers are just like we can take them down we can kill them right now and like the person that's in charge out in space he's like mm -mm. emperor says he's got plans for him don't kill him just keep him from escaping but don't kill him and it's all just a ruse to try to get uh luke to come to the dark side because he feels like luke is stronger than darth vader is and I think that even his father knew, even Darth Vader knew, even Anakin knew, like, yeah, this is how this is going to go down and everything. He's stronger than I am. Um, and it's, it's revealed because uh, they're trying so hard to, to, to push him and everything. They're trying to get this anger and this rage to come out. And when it does, it does it's violent this is probably the most violent scenes <laughs> violent fight in the entire series it's violent luke is literally has his lightsaber and he's not even swinging it like a sword he is swinging it like a bat he is doing everything he can to cut down vader and it's like wow he's angry <laughs> you see the rage come out of him and like i said it's that old, that Skywalker rage. It comes out, but he's just like, huh, huh, huh. he's like wailing his th uh, his his lightsaber at at um at at Vader and just whew, eventually like chops his hand off again, like this hand the amputee thing. I don't know what's up with that, but the hand gets cut off. I'm not sure. You know, like, he went down. Don't get me wrong. Vader went down because of it. But if I'm remembering correctly, that's already a cybernetic arm. So, should it have taken him down as much as it did? I don't know. I don't think so. But maybe he was using some type of force against him anyway. And it was that was hurting him as well. And stuff like that. But, we all know... Um, uh, you know, the Emperor is just like, yes, yes, use the rage, you know, become my apprentice. And he's like, no, you know, he, he, he resists. He sees what he's done. And I like, I like the realization, like, you know, like he saw red for a while and he's like, you know, he's wailing on him. And then when he realizes what he's done, he's like, oh no, 
and he stops. He stops himself. He's like, no, I can't do this. You know, I, I can't um, become what you, I'm not going to become, I'm not going to be like my father. I'm not going to be that person. You know, I'm not going to succumb to the dark side or whatever. Um, and it's pretty triumphant. It's pretty triumphant, but the emperor will have none of it. And he just like, okay, I see. And he uses his little electric bolts and try, and he almost successfully kills, uh, Luke if Vader doesn't intervene. And this is where, see, this is where episode three comes into play a lot. And it hurts a lot more to watch this because he, basically sacrifices himself to save his son and because you know there was this whole thing luke the whole time was like there's good in you there's good in you this is why i didn't mention in the previous episodes as to why he was after him is because luke represented that that light inside of vader he was that representation of it. That's why he never killed him when he had the opportunity to. Um, you could say, I would, you know, you know, you know how like you say like the force intervenes at times. If the force wills it, it will happen. That's the kind of how I felt in episode four when Han came back and literally saved Luke's ass, Luke's ass, because Luke was dead. Luke was dead if he didn't, um, if, like, Han doesn't show back up, Luke's dead. So that was just like, you know, it's one of those ex machina moments, but you, this whole series has been saying, like, if the Force wills it, it will happen. So that's kind of how I kind of interpreted it as, like, yeah, this is meant to be. And once he realized, like, okay, that's my son, he's, like, after him. He's like, this is... To represent to them, this is my light side. This is my connection back to who I once was. And in some regard, I feel like he wanted to get back there. So when he sees his son about to die, he's like, no, he can't. No. So he sacrifices himself to save, uh, to save Luke. And it's pretty... <sighs> But once again, I, I go back to like episode three and like this particular moment, the execution wasn't really there. And maybe that's just because like, you know, the acting prowesses were a little bit different back then. But the essence of what was happening is like, I remember Vader's story. I remember what happened to him. And seeing this got me choked up. It really did. It was just like, oh, man. You you don't want him to die. At this particular point, I don't want him to die. Now, when I first saw this, when he died, I was like, man, that's really sad. But having watched this entire series over, when this happens, I don't want him to die. I was like, no. I know it's going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. But it's like, seeing this in a different light now, it's just like, Damn, I don't. I wish he didn't. I wish he didn't die. I wish he could. Um, I wish he could, you know, be by his son's side and stuff like that. I wish he could. And yeah, he eventually does become one with the Force and everything. But it's like, dang, dang. And then there's the scene where he's burning. You know, he gives him the same ceremony that was given to uh, Qui Gon Jinn, and it's just like, it's sad. It's really, really sad. And there's some times where Mark Hamill's face just really sells it. And just, <laughs> it just makes, it chokes me up. And just, just because, like, this Vader's story is so tragic. It's so tragic. And he had, you know, like, for years, for years, he, you know, been working for the dark side. He's just like, no, it's too late for me. And stuff. He's just like, I, this is who I am, you know, and, um, and then realizing, you know, at the, at the bitter end that, no, this is not who I am. You know, uh, I was, I was wrong before. And, and, you know, he, 
basically atone for it, but it's sad. It's just so sad now. Like, wow. It's like, man. You, you, you don't want him to die. You really don't. So, um, yeah, it, it left me a little bit sad about that. That was the one thing that left me a little bit sad about. Um, you get some new additions here. I mean, other than, like, some of the CGI moments, stuff like that. You get to see other um the other worlds that every every pretty much every place you've been to you see gungar you see uh, uh um nabu and other places you pretty much see every place they have gone to through the prequels and stuff like that and through this um through the original trilogy there they go back to all these places some of them don't look so great i'll be honest with you <laughs> some of them don't look so great you can tell like they were afterthoughts and stuff like that and maybe it's not that they don't look so great it's that they're out of place like they might they would probably look fine in the trilogy in the uh prequels but they look out of place here because like the effects don't match so it's kind of like oh well it's a little it's a little odd but i thought it was a nice touch to be perfectly honest i was like oh okay and they do change something at the end and i understand like so it will upset some people is that instead of of older anakin you have younger Anakin. You have, uh, um, what's his name? The actor's name. I can't remember his name. I'm so sorry. Uh, Hayden Christensen. You have him returning in the in the Force form. Like you know, you have old Obi Wan Kenobi, old Yoda, and then you have Anakin. But before you had the original, like you had his father. You had a. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sebastian Shaw. <laughs> uh, oddly enough, I never realized the dude's name was Sebastian Shaw, and I'm like, that's so funny. <laughs> His name's Sebastian Shaw, and like, if you read comics, you know why. That's I think that's funny. But yeah, it was like Sebastian Shaw. But you know, he's there, and he is. Uh, originally, you had Sebastian Shaw in Force form and everything. It was the older version of Anakin, and they changed that so that it was Hayden Christensen. And a lot of people are probably going to be upset about that. And I get it. I understand. But when I first saw it, like, because the first time I saw this, I saw the original. I didn't see, like, the special edition version. Like, I saw the original. And this is the first time I'd seen the special edition version. I can tell where some of the uh, the effects were up uh, or were uh, added in and some things were upgraded and stuff like that. I definitely know, like, these... I definitely caught the scenes, like, okay, where they went to Gungar and Nabu. I'm like, yeah, they didn't go to these places before. So this is all new. Um, but then, like, the Hayden Christensen scene. At the end, he doesn't say anything, but, you know, it, it's not a bad injury. It doesn't look, like, bad um, it doesn't look bad. It looks about the the effect they made the they made the effects match. I I kind of like that they made the effects match. Um, when I saw it, I understood. I understood because I was thinking about it. Just like yeah, he would be back in the form that he was in before he became Vader, because otherwise, like yeah, I feel like he would be in that. You know, it would. He would show up as he once was, when he was Anakin. And I kind of liked it. <laughs> I, 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 I can't lie, I kind of liked it. I, you can argue like, oh, why didn't they have younger Obi-Wan and younger Yoda? And I'm kind of like, well, they were always, you know, quote unquote, good people. So when they gave themselves, when they when they died at the end, you know, it was still their uh, their Jedi form. This was as like so when they brought back Anakin, it was as he remembered as a Jedi. It was his old self before he became Vader. So I kind of understood it. And actually, I kind of liked it a little bit. Um, uh, like I said I completely understand if you don't. <laughs> I completely understand. Um, like I said, I this is the first time I've seen the special edition third, uh, um, third episode, uh, fifth, sixth episode. It's the first time I've seen that. Um, this is long. <laughs> it's definitely you feel the length of this movie quite a bit, especially when you get to the Ewok planet. You're just like. Uh, <laughs> it's dragging a little bit there's payoff at the end of it don't get me wrong there's payoff but it kind of drags a little bit um and you know you have the big celebration at the end and stuff like that and 
you feel like the story is over and in all accounts if i'm being perfectly honest it is which is why i had so much trouble really reconciling that there was an episode episode uh seven coming out hey hey there's a cat under here <laughs> it's mona um do you guys watch my previous video you know that i'm cat sitting over the weekend but um i i really had trouble reconciling the fact that they were coming out within episode seven i was just like but they they completed the story the empire fell so what what i mean granted i know that there's things like there's still empire soldiers around they're still extremists but they are now the minority so it makes you wonder what really happened which is why i'm thinking there at some point there's going to be kind of like rogue one rogue one kind of bridges the gap between episode three and episode four um it really really does like it like i'll get into that in another video but like it kind of bridges that gap this one between six and seven you probably need a little bit of something to bridge the gap now granted you know what kind of happened there's enough exposition to what you know what kind of happened but dare i say seeing it might be a little bit interesting you know i, I would probably sit and see that um but i enjoyed this movie i enjoyed this movie um all in all it's I don't know if it's, I don't know how far, it's. if it's above episode three, it's slightly above episode three. It's not like, it's not like by a, by a lengthy margin, but it's slightly above episode three. It's good. It, um, like I said, it's very basic, just like all of these um, original trilogy are very basic in story. And they, they keep to it very much, but this is the only one where they kind of like had a really, really slow, dumb moment in the movie. And it kind of like turned me off to it for a little bit. But then when they got back to the story, and then there was the payoff at the end for it, I just like, I kind of forgave it. So, um, yeah, still top three. Still top three. I still think this original trilogy is definitely, I mean, definitely top three. Um, if, yeah, I would say definitely top three. Uh, and at the end of this, after I do Rogue One, I'll try to rank my uh, my Star Wars movies in order for which ones the ones I mostly enjoy to the ones I didn't enjoy as much. Um, I can already tell you episode two is going to be at the very bottom. <laughs> but... You know, um, I say I really enjoyed it. So what did you guys think of Turn of the Jedi? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you like the Ewoks? I know they're cute, but did you like the scene with the Ewoks or anything like that? Did you have any... Did the original trilogy, did Episode 3 influence how you felt about Episode 6 at all? And for me, it did a lot. Um, but... Whatever you think, put it in the comments below. Don't forget to follow my friend JJ's blog at 4comicjunkies.blogspot.com. Follow him on Twitter at 4comicjunkies. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. McBlam. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you really enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, and I will see you in Episode 7.